Hello everyone and welcome back. At the Triple Fusion build have become a common sight to see with players who enjoy challenging and fun build styles. I tend to see these builds occur the most in PvP areas, but in PvE they do have a time and place. Hence why today's build is not only focused on three elements in one build, but they also lean heavily into the use of the Season 23 seasonal mods. I mean, with this build, you'll be able to Scorch, Ignite, Debuff, Unravel, Freeze, Suspend and use Threadlings with some interesting combos. So let's break down why you should give this a try this season. To start, you're going to want our Weaver's Call where casting a Rift will produce 3 Threadlings and deploy any Threadlings on you. You'll then want Mindspun Invocation to enhance your grenades. A Mindspun Invocation is where the build will excel the best in, as this combined with all weapons will allow us to suspend targets and also trigger Scorch Ignitions via the seasonal mods and weapons. Not only that, but with how everything is designed, we can keep a consistent buff going that will benefit Weaver's Call as we play. Looking into Fragments, Thread of Evolution, where threading travel further and deal additional damage. Thread of Mind, where defeating suspended targets grant class ability energy. Thread of Generation, where dealing damage generates grenade energy. And Thread of Continuity, where suspend, unravel, and several effects durations are increased. Having Thread of Continuity in mind is a must for the build, as we want to make sure that suspending all targets can last a very long time, while also being able to use our Threadlings as much as possible. All of this will add up down the line in terms of dealing damage fast and quickly, but most importantly is how this effect will trigger seasonal mods as well. For example, suspending targets makes it easier to land and activate our rate of fire effect and additional mods we also have for it. Well, using a stasis weapon can debuff targets if we start with that first, and then we can suspend. You have many ways of approaching this, so understanding these seasonal mods will be key to your survival. For the mods and stats, we have Discipline and Recovery as the highest stats to invest in, while Strength will also play a part when unraveling targets. Now, at tier 10, our recovery stat will have a 48 second cooldown upon being used and does not need any additional mods to help support it. The base cooldown of the stat is already quite good enough to where we can apply the Thread of Mind Fragment and call it a day. All this stat will be used for is the generation of Threadlings, so it shouldn't be too hard to create, nor should it be too hard to master. A discipline, we have ours at tier 10 for a 1 minute 16 cooldown via Shackle Grenades. To help bolster this stat further, we have the Feather Generation Fragment that will help with generating grenade ability as we play, but also have the grenade kickstart for a 38.4 to 45% grenade regen upon being triggered. This will be enough to support the stat since Feather Generation will be doing the heavy lifting, but most importantly, having the Harmonica mods and Powerful Attraction mod should be enough to help you with gathering orbs to greatly benefit the build. And then lastly, our strength is at tier 5 for 1 minute 23 cooldown via Arcane Needle. The reason why the stat is important in the build is because of the Torch mod, where upon being Radiant, we actually do extra damage to those debuffed by our strand or stasis effects. Since unraveling can be done via melee, we have two ways to increase our damage on the fly. Having this here with melee kickstart should be enough to balance out the grenade regen being provided and as long as we make enough orb to power, we can freely use this stat with little downtime involved. For armor charges, charge up times 2 is going to be giving you a plus 1 to charge stacks, but you can also add on the stacks and stacks perk if you want to be able to collect 2 orbs of power instead of 1. We also have the Solar Siphon or Thermodynamic mod to help with creating orbs of power via our chosen weapon. And then Heavy Ammo Find and Scavenger will be last things to add with help for using our Heavy more often over time. Our secondary is the Riptide Fusion Rifle with Chill Clip and Auto Load and Holster. An amazing fusion rifle that's both easy to get and a must have for any content you play in that may involve a ton of enemies. Although Chill Clip is not as powerful as it was before, it's still a game changer against all enemies in game. Our primary is the Vex Mythic class, which is a weapon that not many people have gotten just of yet, but once gotten, pairs perfectly with the Reign of Fire exotic. As a full auto fusion rifle, it doesn't hit as hard as one, but its large magazine allows it to vaporize targets one after another. With its secondary effect turning the weapon into a linear fusion for higher damage, the weapon is capable of dealing large damage the more the user uses it. 
With the given seasonal mod though, the weapon will make short work of champions and that added bonus of Radiant does make our damage hit even more harder than before. Our heavy is the Bride's Contempt, with power Cusual, Affinity and Envious Assassin. This is my main powerhouse when dealing with bosses or mini bosses and it has a whole lot of buffs going for it from the Radiant buff down to the Harmonic Resonance trait. As it's also an aggressive frame, it also means that we can actually activate the Torch Seasonal mods much more easier and thus have a near permanent buff via mod and Jason Exotic. A 3 in 1 multi elemental build is a very common setup that most players are used to when organising which elemental items they want to use the most. Although it's recommended to at least match your weapons with a subclass chosen, you can get away with it depending on the difficulty and type of content you're playing. The build however is designed for endgame specifically and does use a multitude of effects to get this buffs going. Surprisingly, upon me creating the build, it actually used the season 23 seasonal mods as well so we could fully blend our tags into one and produce a large enough buff where everything again benefited from it. So we have Strand, Stasis and Solar and all three of the elements have some benefit from the seasonal mods one way or another. For example, with our solar weapons, we have Kindling Trigger, Rain of Fire, Torch, and Razor Precision, where we can actively get Radiant, Scorch targets, debuff targets by 5%, and ignite them. The stasis, we have Dragon's Bite and Held the Storm, where our weapon can do more stasis damage and also freeze much faster. Then you have Strand, where we can suspend, launch thread things, and unravel. All these things when combined into one will not only cover some of the anti-champion side of things but also cover a wide array of ability effects upon action of the user. This is literally a build that encourages players to use the seasonal mods more and it shows you an easy way to achieve that that's not convoluted or confusing. Lastly, it uses three fusion rifles instead of the one that most players will be used to and I know that most players won't have unlocked the Vex to do the build but you can still pull it off as long as you make some adjustments on the special ammo required. However, there is a caveat to such a build that most of you may have noticed beforehand. Firstly, on my side, I removed the Torch Seasonal mod since Rain of Fire can fill that spot in. However, having a Torch mod as well would be useful for quickly getting Radiant there and then. Rain of Fire is fun to play with, but if you ever go up against a barrier champion in PvE content and you have nothing to break their shields, it will leave you vulnerable. Uh, secondly, running out of special ammo might be an issue depending on how often you use your special here and there. Since we can debuff targets with our stasis weapon and radiant effect, we can use this to quickly dispatch targets. Overusing the weapon on non-VIP Overusing this weapon on non-VIP targets may cause issue down the line when you actually need that small buff quickly. Overall, the build is an interesting twist to have for Season 23 builds where you want to try and use everything in one and its viability is dependent on mods unlocked. However, if you want to see how good the seasonal mods are while in action, then the following build will surely pique your interest. If not, then you just need to adjust to your own liking. So there we have it, I hope you all enjoyed the build breakdown. If you have any forms and content shared, then please leave a comment below. Well, at the same time, if you enjoy the content and want more of these videos in the future, then leave a like and a sub bar here. I will leave a dim link for the build below, and if you want more stuff like this, then I have players available covering all types of builds you desire. It was great sharing today's video with you all, and I hope to see you again soon.